standard athletic jumping events include the long jump, the triple jump, the high jump and the pole vault. In this video, we are going to analyze the first two jumps, the long jump and the triple jump. Both refer to jumping as far as possible in the plane that constitutes the round. Before starting, I invite you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. The first type of jump that we are going to analyze is the long jump, as this is much more basic. The goal is to cover the maximum possible distance in the horizontal plane from a jump after a race. It's a natural specialty, since all of us, to a greater or lesser extent, are able to perform the technique innately without having learned it before. Another thing is that if we want to break our own records, we have to train. It began to compete in long jump already in the Olympic Games of Antiquity at least from the year 708 before Christ, and was included in the pentathlon events. It's been part of the athletics program at the modern Olympic Games since its first edition held in Athens in 1896. The women's category of the event debuted at the Games held in London in 1948. The competition area contains all the following elements. The acceleration track, the foul line, the layer of plasticine and the sandpit. The acceleration track doesn't have a specific length, but it usually measures approximately 50 meters long and 1.22 meters wide. The jump line is 1 to 3 meters before the pit and is 20 centimeters wide. Following this, there is the 10 centimeters wide plasticine board that allows visibility of the test in the event of being passed or stepped on. The landing area or pit is a wet sandbag 3 meters wide and 10 meters long and is located at least 1 meter from the takeoff line. The previous acceleration run must be carried out within an existing area and that ends in a takeoff board that indicates the limit point to carry out the impulse. There is no specific running distance before the jump. The landing has its place on a sandpit. The distance of the jump is measured from the takeoff board to the most leg mark on the sand made by any part of the athlete's body. The indicator or the plasticine board is a bar that is placed before the sun and you must jump from it. Competitors perform three jumps each. The longest jump is always taken into account. The person who achieves the longest jump length is declared the winner. If there is a tie between two athletes, the one with the second longest jump will win. If there are more than eight participants, each jumper performs three qualifying jumps. Top 8 go to the next round of 3 other jumps. The time available to make the attempts is 1 minute and 2 minutes in the final stage of competition. The maximum limit for a valid jump is more than 2 meters of downwind. The jump is considered null if the competitor performs one of the following actions. If he steps on the indicator, that is, the footprint is marked on the plasticine. If it jumps from outside the takeoff board. If you do a somersault. If you touch the run outside the landing area, leaving a mark closer to the takeoff line than the one left on the sandpit. If you walk on your back through the landing area. If you walk back in your tracks without ever leaving the sandpit. And if it exceeds the stimulated time to perform the jump. The long jump, as in other athletics jumping events, has four phases in its execution. The acceleration phase, the takeoff phase, the flight phase and the landing phase. In the first phase or approach run, the acceleration is about 16-20 meters for beginners, the equivalent of 12 strides, or up to 50 meters for professionals, the equivalent of 20 strides. The takeoff phase is the most important of all and seeks to achieve the highest vertical drive without loss of speed. For this, the penultimate step will be made a little longer and the last step a little shorter. This makes it easier to perform the vertical drive of the center of gravity without significant speed loss. The third phase is the flat phase. 
There are three techniques in the movements that the athlete executes during this phase. They all try to adapt a more balanced and profitable final position. In the natural technique, the jumping leg joins the free leg, and in this sitting position the translation is carried out. It's suitable for short jumpers and for beginners. The extension technique consists of lowering the free leg backwards, facilitating the arcing of the body in its union with the jumping leg to allow the keeping, characteristic of the extension. If done well, you gain about half a meter compared to the natural technique. It's recommended for short athletes. The scissor step technique is the best technique to achieve a good jump and also the most complex. It's appropriate for tall athletes. In it, the jumper is closed continuously as if it were running in the air. The athlete picks up the free leg and very flex it, carries it forward, semi-extending it to the horizontal and an approximately the same height as the jumping leg. The arms rotate at the shoulder joint and back and forth to help balance leg movements. It ends with a forward flexion of the trunk without lowering the legs. Depending on how the steps are done in the air, in the flight phase this technique will receive two names, simple scissors also called two and a half or double scissors also called three and a half. The more steps you can take in the air, the longer the jump will be, but there are athletes who prefer to take fewer steps in the air to keep their legs stretched longer. In this sequence of image we can see an example of a double scissor technique or three and a half steps. After the jumping phase, the athlete extends the free leg forward by opening the scissors and taking the first step, then close the scissors by bringing the legs together on the vertical axis of the body. Reopen the scissors, this time with the legs in the opposite direction and taking the second step. The scissors are closed again and again open to take the third step. The missing half step is to extend your leg from back to front, extending it and joining it with the other leg to land sitting. If the athlete will perform a simple two and a half step scissor technique, we would go from the third image directly to the last, deleting the previous two images. The landing phase is the last of all. The landing must be done on the heels and with the legs extended because if you landing with the butt, centimeters are lost. There are two ways to land, the rotary system and the falling hole. These two forms of landing are justified because contact with the sun usually implies a breaking reaction to the center of gravity which can determine that the athlete is sitting in the sun pit. In the rotary system, after the feet come into contact with the round, the body must be allowed to rotate on them to surpass the support laterally. You can help this action with a turn of the feet. The landing is normally prepared by putting your feet slightly to the opposite side where you are going to exit. In the falling hole, after foot contact, the legs must be flexed so that the hips touch the heels. The feet, when sliding into the pit, allow the entire body to enter the hole formed by them, and the jumper can end up almost lying face up in it. All said about this section, the order of importance of the phases of the jump would be as follows. In first place, the takeoff phase. In second place, the acceleration phase. In third place, the flight phase. And lastly, the landing phase. The heel is very important for the long jump, as well as for the triple jump as we'll see later. Any jumper must have a structure and heel it run to be able to jump. There are two old rules when it comes to healing. The first says that novice jumpers must have the same number of strides as years old. This really doesn't have much of a scientific basis, so we discard it directly. The second rule says that it's enough to measure the number of strides you want to take with the following equivalence. Two steps walking are equivalent to a running stride. This rule makes more sense than the previous one since it's used a lot because it's very practical. It's not still entirely accurate. The truth is that you have to measure with a tape measure or fit the distance that the jumper uses to carry out his previous race. 
this hill must be referenced with one or normally two intermediate marks that serve as control for the different phases of the race. For example, a 12 stride run, the equivalent of 24 walking steps, can be split into two sections of six strides. Instead, an 18 stride run, the equivalent to 36 walking steps, can be split into three sections of six strides. In this table, we can see the records broken in long jump. So far, in terms of world records, the American Mike Powell achieved 8.95 meters in Tokyo in 1991 and Soviet Kalina Chistyakova achieved 7.52 meters in Leningrad in 1988. The Olympic records were achieved by Bob Beamon with 8.90 meters at the 1968 Olympics in Mexico City and his compatriot Jackie Junior Carsey with 7.40 meters at the 1988 Olympics in Seoul. If you want to see the records at continental level in more detail, pause this video. This image corresponds to the sandpit of the Olympic University Stadium in Mexico City where in 1968 Bob Beamon made the so-called the perfect jump that was an Olympic record. The other type of jump we are going to analyze in this video is the triple jump. Unlike the long jump, this is a complex specialty since its technique must be taught and undertaken in order to perform it yourself. The objective is to cover the maximum possible distance in the horizontal plane from a triple jump after a race. The men's event has been part of the athletics program at the Olympic Games since its first edition in Athens in 1896. In contrast, the women's event didn't debut until the 26th edition held in Atlanta in 1996. To perform a triple jump, you have to do a sequence of three steps. The jump follows one of the two leg sequences. Either left, left, right, drop to feet together, or right, right, left, drop to feet together. The jump line is located 13 meters before the men's sandpit and 11 meters before the women's sandpit. The triple jump has the same regulations as the long jump such that the measurement is made from the closest footprint left by the athlete in the sand to the takeoff board, and if the jumper makes the hop past the foul line, the jump will be cancelled. The phases of the triple jump are the same as in the long jump and other types of jump in track and field but they are adapted to this style of modality. In the racing phase, the jumper accelerates to maintain a constant speed in the section of the track. The approach speed is less than in the long jump so the race is less long. This race consists of 10 to 12 strides for beginners and 16 to 18 strides for professionals. The jumping phase is divided into three levels or leaps that give this type of jump its name. The first jump is known as hop, and in it the impulse is taken and falls with the same leg. This jump covers about 35% of the total distance. The second jump is called step, and consists of propelling with one leg and falling with the opposite. The second jump covers over 30% of the total distance. The step is the most critical part of the three jump sequence of the triple jump. The third and last jump is called jump. It consists of propelling with one leg and falling to feet together. With the third jump we cover about 35% of the total distance. Then the flight phase and the landing phase will continue. In this last phase the landing must be done with the feet because if you land with the butt you lose in centimeters. In addition, in triple jump the landing with a rotary system is preferred. In this table we can see the different records broken in triple jump so far. 
In the world records, the British Jonathan Edwards achieved in Gothenburg in 1995 18.29 meters. And in the same competition, the Ukrainian Inesa Kravitz managed 15.50 meters. The Olympic records were set by the American Kenny Harrison in Atlanta 1996 doing 18.11 meters. And the Cameroonian Francois Bango Eton in Beijing in 2008 achieving 15.39 meters. If you want to take a closer look at the records achieved at the continental level, pause this video. In the records on indoor track, the French Ted Tango made 17.92 meters in Paris in 2011, and the recent Tatiana Lebedeva achieved 15.36 meters in Budapest in 2004. Again, I invite you to stop this video if you want to take a closer look at the other records. We'll see now some difference between the long jump and the triple jump. We've already seen some of them previously. Regarding the type of specialty, the long jump is a natural jump since everyone to a greater or lesser extent can perform their technique without having learned it. Instead the triple jump is a complex jump since each sequence of three jumps must be learned. In the long jump technique there is only one leap, while in the triple jump there are three phases, hop, step and jump. Regarding the distance of the foul line with respect to the sandpit, in long jump it varies from 1 to 3 meters apart, while in triple jump it's 13 meters in men and 11 meters in women. The running or acceleration phase involves about 20 strides in long jump and about 18 strides in triple jump speaking at a professional level. The jumping phase lasts about 10 hundredths of a second in long jump, while in triple jump the first leap or hop lasts a little longer. And finally, an indifferent landing style into the sandpit is used in long jump, while in triple jump the rotary system is practically always used. The location of the acceleration tracks for long jump and triple jump varies according to the stadium. There are stadiums where both modalities are practiced on the same track and depending on what type of jump is done, athletes will run towards one end or the other one. There are stadiums where both tracks with their sandpits are located parallel to each other. And finally, there are stadiums where both tracks are located on opposite sides of the grass field. The clothing that athletes usually wear is the next, a breathable t-shirt and sports mesh or baggy shirts. Competitors wear track spikes that give a better push and grip when running and also don't slip when landing on the sand. These are made of fiber rubber that absorbs the impact suffered by the jumper when landing. The length of the spikes can be from 3 to 50 mm depending on the type of surface and the contest. We finish with this content. If you think that I brought you value with this information and it can be of help to someone, share this video and thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel and click the bell to receive notices of new videos. See you next time.